The presidential election of the Nigerian Bar Association in 2020 saw Olumide Akbata win by a landslide. The first time in 31 years an NBA president emerged outside the rank of the senior advocate of Nigeria. Now, ahead the July the 16th NBA election, many say the race once again pits the outer bar against the prestigious inner bar. Kemi Foladiemo has more. The contenders for the NBA presidency are two senior advocates of Nigeria, Joki Arikadzama, who is contesting for the second time, and Mikhail Yakubu. Jonathan Tidy is a former National General Secretary. The Young Weeks Foundation and the Legal Concert convened this presidential debate to hear the candidates address key concerns, such as welfare of lawyers and speaking truth to power. I condemn the such acts of brutality, intimidation, subjugation, and the kind of ordeal that lawyers who are supposed to be hunters become hunted by the police and other security agencies. As chairman of MBA Security Agencies Relations Committee, I've done a lot of work on that. If I identify any injury anywhere, I know by the special grace of God, the expertise that God has given to me as a lawyer, I know where to look for the remedy. And the only thing that I can do, which is the only civilized means by which you can seek for remedy, is to sue. It's on record. I remain the only chairman who has ever been on the payroll of government by way of monthly alerts. And I'm happy to say that because nobody could call me to try to twist uh, the issues that were before me. So I dealt with them by my oath of office. The debate questions were mostly generated online and the candidates um, gave varying promises of I, making the I bar more the relevant if voted in. But the organizers say they will hold the eventual winner accountable. We have amongst our, our, our constituents a lot of young lawyers and also law students who will be graduating this year into the legal profession who are very concerned about the state of the legal profession. Some of us, uh, some of the, our constituents are concerned about the current state. Some of them are concerned about the continuation of the good things that they've already seen that are already existing. For, for young lawyers, the most important achievement of this administration that we will have to maintain is the development of the capacities of lawyers. That is the way by which we would make young lawyers globally competitive. We have to engage whoever is the Attorney General and our colleagues on the other side to make it easy for judgments to be enforced because it makes nonsense of it. If you have a judgment, you cannot enforce. We can't go back to the legislature all the time to say amend the law. Take it up and let us challenge it. It's a matter that we can take up public interest litigation to say our constituents, our clients are unable to access the fruits of their, of their labor. But now it remains to be seen how the votes by the more than 60,000 eligible voters in Nigeria will swing. Kemi Foladiemo, TVC News, Lagos. Thanks for staying with us. A church in Nigeria is advocating a societal approach to taming corruption. It enjoins true Christians to take up leadership positions as a way of stamping out the hydra-headed problem of graft from Africa. TVC News correspondent Joke Adisa reports. The African Union adopted its Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption in 2003. The convention came to force three years after research analyses and media reports paint a grim picture of in-depth corruption across the continent. Reports say Africa loses more than 50 billion U.S. dollars every year through illicit financial outflows. And this directly impacts the quality of the lives of its people. Poverty, absence of basic amenities, lack of quality education, and basic Medicare are some of the realities of graft in Africa. On July the 11th every year, concerned citizens in Africa pause to reflect on success in fighting grafts in their communities. They could find no corruption in it. With no less than 115 scriptures standing against corruption in the Holy Book, the church says it is high time the crusade against corruption is taken to the grassroots. God has a expectation of Christians with regards to corruption. God expects Christians to shun corruption, to speak against corruption, and to stand up against corruption. It is also an opportunity for other Nigerians to assess the nation's battle against the menace of corruption. Due to the corruption, we don't have steady light, we don't have access roads, and 
insecurity everywhere. So this one affects me very much. Anywhere you go with a Nigerian passport today, people are just afraid of you because they think that corruption has become the norm and, you know, it is part of our lives. We need to put an end to that by making a difference in our various corners. Let's hope if we put ourselves together, vote the right person. And we have been praying so that God will help. If you go to your leader house and you say, oh, leader, I come to greet you, and the man didn't give you money, you believe that the man is a wicked man. For many Nigerians, the Anti-Corruption Day is yet another golden opportunity for the country to assess its strategies against graft, examine the potential of new ideas, and achieve sustainable positive impact on the lives of its citizens, particularly those in the rural communities. Joke Edson, TVC News, Abuja. And to other stories, the Nigerian Air Force is improving its medical services delivery by upgrading courses for sundry trades at the Air Force School of Medical Sciences and Aviation Medicine in Kaduna. 81 officers who were trained in these courses have now graduated. Lupe has some reports. The Nigerian Air Force School of Medical Sciences and Aviation Medicine in Kaduna is tasked with the initial training of nurses and medical technicians in allied medical fields. The institution is now being upgraded to further achieve these objectives. 81 Air Force personnel who were trained in the newly upgraded courses such as X-ray, dietetics and preventive health services have now completed their training. The training of the students was aimed at not only positioning them for upgrading, but to impart knowledge and positive attitude that would enhance their performance in the field. This A1 upgrading training is very significant because this is the first time upgrade courses have been conducted in the College of Allied Medical Sciences. Senior Air Force officers at their graduation ceremony believe the introduction of these upgraded courses will add value and improve the medical service delivery of the force. I have no doubt that the very soon the other similar courses will follow suit. All of these are in line with one of the key drivers of the Chief of the Air Star's vision, which is to pursue purposeful training and human capacity development. As medical personnel, I urge you all that as you return to your respective units, let your colleagues and patients see and feel the positive impact this course has made on you. Other refresher courses will also be organized for various medical service personnel. The aim is to further expose them to global best practices in aviation medicine. Lupe Asom, TVC News, Kaduna. And as the quest for quality leadership in all spheres of life continues, Nigerians have been advised to take advantage of tools necessary for developing the required skills. This comes as thought leaders believe many organizations are dealing with deep-rooted leadership challenges which can be surmounted by the use of the internet. We have more in this report. Nigeria is blessed with diverse natural resources, but harnessing these resources for the good of its citizens has been a major challenge. That challenge has been identified as leadership gap. And with that in mind, Nigeria's current state has been described as a disservice to those who put their lives on the line for her independence. The youths are now being urged to take advantage of the opportunities of online platforms to develop themselves. It's obvious that we are dealing with a leadership crisis um, in this time. And, you know, it cuts across personal lives, it cuts across businesses, it cuts across our nation. A lot of Nigerians are skeptical about leadership. Um, a lot of leaders, a lot of Nigerians are averse to leadership. Um, sometimes your mom might say the examples they've seen. Sometimes people may uh, just believe it's not for people like them. But many here believe the success recorded by any society is dependent on the kind of leadership it produces. With online tools, uh, they are, they are cost-effective ways of gaining knowledge, of reshaping yourself, because leadership really starts with individual. It begins with leading yourself. So once you have access to global information even from your own locale all right it makes it a lot more interesting such that you are able to apply or adapt it to your own situation theophilus ilama tvc news Lagos.